So we got this guy hooked up now and uh, systems running. You know, I got the uh, I got the clamps mounted down there, one on the suction line, one on the liquid line. Uh, got the system running the way it should be, and let's take a look at what we can actually see with a with a digital gauge set now. So just uh, to uh, to walk you through the the basic features of it. So here's what we got. So right here, what we're looking at is EV is evaporating temperature and CO is condensing temperature. So our evaporator is actually operating right at 39.2 degrees. Our condenser is operating at 91 degrees. That is the that is the measured temperature of the coil, right? If we're talking about saturation temperature, so what it's doing is taking the pressure, converting it to temperature, and that's our saturation temperature of the coil. Now, if we if we hit the down arrow here, what we get is a measure temperature. We got T1 and T2. So T1 is the temperature of the suction line. T2 is the temperature of the liquid line. We scroll down again. And this is a calculated difference between the saturation temp and the, and the measured temp. So what we got here is superheat on the on the left and subcooling on the right. So we're running right around 10 degrees of subcooling. This is a TXV system. We're going to go look at the charging chart in just a minute, and we'll take a look at how this thing is charged. But you can see it's it uh, exactly what's going on here. So what we got is uh, 114 on the low side, 280 on the high side, and about 10 degrees of uh, of subcooling and about 18 degrees of total superheat, right? Because we're measuring it at the uh, after the outlet of the evaporator, obviously at the condensing unit. Now, um, just a couple of cool things we can see here. If we hit the min, min mean max button, I'm going to go ahead and hit minimum, and the, the minimum superheat is running about 9.4. Minimum subcooling was 4.7. The, the maximum was 19.1 and 10.6, and then the mean, the average, is 17.3 and then come back again to actual. Now if I hit the, the uh, go to the min and I hit, hit the P equals zero key, what's going to happen is it's going to wipe those out and uh, hold that down for a few seconds it'll wipe those out. So now we're looking at the minimum superheat is 17.5, the maximum was 17.8, the mean was 17.6, and then back to the actual again. And what that allows you to do is, is uh, you know, after the system stabilized, look at the minimum, maximum, and the average uh, superheater subcooling so you can see the systems like periodically flooding or hunting or uh, having some other issues that you may overlook there. Um, got a, a real simple button configuration we got the uh, the backlight button here turns on and off the backlight um, we've got our power button we got our P equals zero button which you can't do anything with right now because it's the pressure is too high. That's one of the nice features of this instrument is it won't allow you to zero the pressure transducers when you have over a couple PSI on it and then we have our refrigerant key where we can select our refrigerant, our set key where we can set our units. So uh, we can go into our units mode. You know, obviously we're set for degrees Fahrenheit right now, PSI, PSIG. Now this is the interesting one again. It allows you to set your uh, your barometric pressure to get the uh, a little higher accuracy, which we're right at 30 today. And then Snowflake is the uh, uh, and heat. This is for um, reverse mode in European heat pumps. So if you if you have a, a, a specially made heat pump, it'll allow it to actually uh, operate in reverse cycle and swap around the superheat and the subcooling automatically. Or, you know, in the case of US, we just would keep it in snowflake mode. We hit set and now it brings it all back up again. So that's the, the basic overview of the, of the features here. Let me scroll back through min, max, and mean. We'll see if those have changed at all. So the, the minimum was 17.5, the maximum is 18.4, the mean 17.8 and then back. And we'll look at the subcooling. Uh, you know, 10, 10 one's the minimum, 10 six is the max, 10 three is the average, and then back to uh, back to the actual readings again. All right, so that's uh, a basic overview of uh, of the instrument. Now let's take a look and see how the charge is doing. So uh, right now in my uh, in my shop here it's uh, 75 degrees. So I'm going to walk over. We'll take a look at the charging chart and. Uh, what I've got here is a, uh, you know, just a uh, the charging instructions for this 13 seer model, and uh, we're at 170 pounds. We'll go across here to 75 degrees. That's the 75 degree column. Come straight down. I should be at right at uh, 281. Yeah, let's get right there. 281, uh, 281 uh, pounds of pressure. Okay. So this is a, a manufacturer's pressure charging chart. So at 75 degrees, 281 if the suction's running 117. So let's go back over and look at this again. So we're right at 117.6, or oh, sorry, 117 and 280.6.
and we're running right at 10 degrees of subcooling. Total superheat 17.6. Now the total superheat, it's not uncommon for total superheat to run high, especially in a condition where we have a low load like this. And the reason I say we have a low load is simply because uh, we don't have a lot of pressure drop across that TXV. It's at pretty much a minimal. We're at the same temperature inside and the same temperature outside because I'm in the, in the shop in here. If we were to block that uh, condenser off, let me throw that panel on top there once, we'll block this condenser off. We'll probably see that change a little bit. So now I got the condenser partially blocked. And what we're going to see here is our high side pressure is definitely coming up quickly. And we're seeing the subcooling go up, and that's because we blocked the condenser. Uh, the coil's big enough that it can actually still get that liquid, keep that liquid relatively cool. In fact, I'm going to scroll down here for just a minute. We'll look at our T, T1 temperature. It's changing. It's coming up. Let's see what we're doing here. All right, we're back to superheat and subcooling. So I'll give this a few minutes to stabilize out. And as we're watching this, as you can see, the high side pressure is definitely coming up. Subcooling is starting to settle back down a little bit. We're still, we increased the subcooling by about four and a half degrees. Total superheat is really not changing, which indicates to me that my, my TXV is obviously doing its job. It's just uh, the superheat setting on the valve must be high, or we got a, you know, a long line set. Like the line set's about 25 foot, and we're just going through a, a, you know, a 75 degree shop, so that shouldn't really impact it too much. Looks like just a high superheat setting on the valve. Uh, if we really wanted to know what the uh, what the evaporator superheat was, we'd go back all the way back here to the uh, evaporator coil. We could check that temperature there and see uh, what's going on. Um, I got this thing set up. Just a couple of notes here might be of interest. Um, do have a uh, do have a sight glass on there? And the only reason I have a sight glass on this is for the moisture indicator. So you can actually see if there's any, any moisture in the, uh, uh, in the refrigerant as we go on there. Right, I got a little uh, liquid line filter dryer inside here. And then uh, let's, see what, let's see what our return air temperature is right now. Return air is uh, 73.6, about 74 degrees. And return air wet bulb is 58 degrees. Zoom in on that a little bit better. Oops. And uh, return air humidity about 40% humidity. So we got a relatively low load on this system when you look at that overall. All right, so let's go back to here. We'll see if we're settling out at all. All right, looks like everything's pretty much staying about the same except for that subcooling. This subcooling increased because we blocked the condenser off a little bit. The, uh, the high side pressure's up. The superheat's running right about the same as it was when we started. Uh, low side pressure's not gonna change, right? Because the uh, TXV is gonna just throttle back and uh, keep the superheat constant and the uh, evaporator pressure is a function of the evaporator load, not the uh, what's going on at the condenser. So we'll see that evaporator still right at 40 degrees where it was when we started. The evaporator temperature, or condensing temperature is 108 now, quite a bit higher because we got the condenser block. Our, our measured temperature is still around 60 degrees. T2 is, is uh, uh, gone up a little bit. So, you know, right, right off the top of my head here, I'm looking at uh, uh, we got a, uh, a TXV with a, with a uh, superheat that is a little bit too high, total superheat. And what I'm going to do next here is uh, go ahead and measure the, uh, the, actual, uh, uh, um, the actual superheat at the outlet of the TXV. If I have a port on this one, I have to look.